What's up world, One Tech Traveller here. If you're looking for an inexpensive and entry level microphone to do stuff like your voiceovers or live streaming online, then the Fifine K669 is a pretty good microphone to do with just that. I'm going to be recording the video using the K669 so you can hear it straight from this video to give you an idea and do a few testing in my final thoughts of using this for a bit of time. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we switched to the Fifine K669. Here's the box it comes in, white minimal packaging, and we have the contents inside, mainly the essentials, the user guide to get started, uh, and hardware-wise, the microphone and an accessory. We've got the table tripod that connects through the standard microphone thread, and then we have the microphone itself. It's pure metal build, the cable is very long, has the standard USB-A connector. It's pretty much plug and play to any device that supports it, like your games console, your laptop, or your desktop. The microphone has the receiving end of the thread that connects it to the table tripod or a microphone stand through the security ring and has an adjustable knob that allows a full 180 degree rotation. It's impressively solid all round through the wire mesh for the microphone and the hardware itself, including the volume controls, all made out of metal. The volume control is nice and smooth without any friction and under sunlight you can actually see the microphone through the wire mesh. It's small and very compact that makes it portable enough to prop up anywhere and bring it with you if you are recording somewhere else, making it a nimble and agile option than a more sturdier desktop one. I think the Fifine K669 is a pretty good inexpensive solution for those wanting to do live streaming, whether that's YouTube, gaming on Twitch, Discord or Facebook Watch. However, where I find it falls short is its lack of mic monitoring built in. The way that Fifine recommends is for you to activate it in the sound control setting in Windows or Mac. However, there is a noticeable lag that makes it pretty much unusable and just makes it a cumbersome workflow for anyone that wants to do voiceovers, narration or anything that requires that monitoring. So what is the difference between a much more expensive microphone? Well, I've got it against the Blue Yeti and you can see it's much lighter, has a smaller footprint. Hardware wise, it stands very well against it, but there's a noticeable step up between the Yeti and the Fifine when it comes to audio. The Blue Yeti just sounds much more fuller and richer. It has that bass levels that the Fifine struggles because of the staging of the microphone hardware itself. It has a mute button, but that's easily replicated in software, so not to worry about that. But the added gain control on the rear and the button that allows you to rotate between the four different modes, such as cardoid, bi-directional, omnidirectional and stereo is one of the features that you'd see in a more premium expensive microphone. So if you're just looking for a cardboard microphone, the Fifi K669 is a well-rounded microphone relative to the price you're paying. It's really good for it in terms of hardware. The audio is pretty good. The acoustics and treble comes out very clear, which is important for podcasting or live streaming work. It does lack a lot of that depth and richness that I just seem to get with the Blue Yeti. Mic monitoring is a very big thing for me, especially if you're in music production and such. So entry level wise, you might wanna consider something that offers a better option for that. Uh, but if you're looking for a general purpose one, then this one is pretty good. The Blue Snowball and the Yeti Nano are the more affordable options compared to the Yeti, but they are still two to three times the price of the Fifine, so you are getting great value for money. So there you have it. I was really impressed with the build quality. It feels really nice and well made in the hand, so hardware wise, uh, it's great. Definitely recommend putting like a pop filter to reduce those P's and S's when you are recording onto this. The audio is pretty good, which comes with your own volume mic controls if you don't need the intricacies of how you want your audio, but something to just record it clean, well, and vibrant enough. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it interesting and you can find my written review on my website at onetechtraveler.com. 
You can also see my travel stories and other gear reviews by checking out the site also. And why not click that subscribe button, hitting the button down below to see more awesome videos like this one. Thanks a lot guys, I'll see you in the next one. But until then, keep being awesome. Peace.